Hello, everybody. How are you today? Uh, my name is Jason Willer, and I'm the International Student Enrollment Coach at Dickinson State University. The purpose of this webcast today is to educate specifically international students about our university, about our programs, and what it takes to apply to Dickinson State. So the structure is going to work like this. Uh, I have a quick presentation where I'm going to explain facts about the university, um, facts about the city that we're in, and North Dakota specifically. Then we're going to go over student life, housing, and specifically how to apply to our university. And finally, after that, <clears throat> we're going to speak with real students that attend here. Uh, we're going to hear about their experience, where they're from, and then finally, after that, we're going to have a question session where I'll be able to answer your questions. During the presentation, you can ask questions at any time. Um, if you have a more specific question, I'm going to give you contact information where you can directly email me and the department. So first, let's begin. Okay. So here, um, here's the first slide. It's just some photographs of different international events that we've had, things that are going on. You can see in the top left-hand corner, this is our mascot. Um, this is a hawk. We're the DSU Hawks. And, you know, here we've got our flag, uh, our flag park, which has flags from all over the world um, representing each of our students. Here we've got a rodeo scene um, because we do have a very large agricultural program at our university. So let's continue. So may, some of you may be asking, uh, where is North Dakota and where is Dickinson specifically? Uh, we've got a map of the United States here. And if you see at the top, there's that red kind of square rectangular state. This is North Dakota. Um, we're on the border with Canada. And um, we're a very unique state in that we experience all of the seasons. And then if you look into the zoomed in part, you can see Dickinson is on the left hand side. Next, facts about Dickinson. Um, Dickinson's a great place to be. There's a lot of things to do to get into. We have several coffee shops and restaurants. If you want to experience real American food, you can definitely find it here. Um, in the summertime, we've got a great water park that's just open, a rec center. So if you like to keep fit, you like to work out, you can always go there. And if you're really into the outdoors, you can really experience a lot of that here. If you're into hiking, if you're into mountain climbing, um, camping, things like that. There's several national parks uh, close to Dickinson. There's several within a couple hours drive. And that's really something a lot of our residents and students like to do, uh, especially in the warmer months. So we have another city, which is called Bismarck. Uh, Bismarck is the capital of North Dakota. And it's a little bit larger city than Dickinson. And it's about um, an hour and a half away. So if you want to get out of town for a little bit, if you want to take a day trip, you can certainly go there. Uh, again, they've got, you know, shopping, restaurants, some malls. They've got a great zoo if you're interested in seeing that. Um, so that's always there available for you too. And as I spoke of before, North Dakota is right on the border with Canada. So a lot of our students can easily uh, either drive or fly over to Canada if they would like to visit another country. Um, a lot of our students from South Korea, they usually fly to Vancouver every year, uh, which is a, a great city up in Canada. It's, it's really enjoyable if you want to go there, catch a hockey game, um, and just, you know, see another country while you're here. All right. Now we're going to get into some facts and figures about Dickinson State University. So the institution was actually founded um, as Dickinson State Normal School. It was kind of an institution founded um, to educate people in the area, uh, and specifically teachers. And the institution was actually founded in 1916, which is about 100 years ago. Finally, in 
1931, Dickinson State actually started to offer four-year degrees. So they started, you know, issuing um, college degrees to people specifically for education. Fast forward um, 80 or 90 years, and in 2003, we began offering our online courses. So for people who didn't want to actually sit in a class, people who were busy, they could attend classes online. And international students also have this opportunity to attend classes online, um, but they can only attend about one each semester because we would like them to really sit in each class, get to know the professors, and you know get to use their communication <laughs> skills um, to the best of their ability. So Dickinson State is a four-year regional public university uh, with a private university setting. So we are funded by the state of North Dakota. Uh, we do have a lot of research going on and a lot of benefits that come from being a public university, um, but it's, it's similar to a private university in that we have a more intimate setting. Uh, our class sizes are very small. We have about 12 students. I mean, yeah, 12 students to each professor. Um, so you can be in a class and have maybe, you know, 12, 13 students. Um, your professor may know that you're there. He may know when you're not there, so you shouldn't really skip class. And some of our general education courses may have 30, 40 to students, but that, that's really the max. And we do offer 51 degrees. They tend to be um, education, computer science, accounting, finance, things like that are our more popular ones um, for our students. But we'll get into more of that in a bit. So here in the United States, we have uh, a very popular magazine called US News and World Report. This magazine kind of goes over um, the best colleges and universities that are in the United States. It decides which ones are the best, uh, which ones have the most opportunities. And I'm pleased to announce that Dickinson State University was named one of the best regional public colleges in the Midwest. So it's really an honor to be on this list and it really gets our name out there. Um, and yeah, we're extremely happy about it. So next we're gonna go over um, international students at DSU. I'm gonna go over how many international students we have, um, you know, where they're from, and what life is like for them when they finally arrive here. So we're going to go over the stats for this semester. For fall 2014, we have a total of 84 national, I'm sorry, international students from 26 countries. Um, we have international students from each continent here, except Antarctica. We have several students that come from the Bahamas, a lot from Canada, some from Europe, Germany, France, um, some from Africa, from Nigeria, from Ghana, and several from China and South Korea. So the next thing I want to go over is the actual cost of attending Dickinson State University. And for some of you, this may be a very important question. How much is it going to cost me? Um, you know, what is it going to be like when I have to go there? I don't want to be in an enormous amount of debt. I don't want my family and friends to be in debt over this. And for one academic year at Dickinson State University, the cost of tuition and fees is going to be $8,500. Again, that's for the whole year, fall semester, to spring, so August to May. The cost for room, board, food, things like that is going to be $5,800. And health insurance, which is mandatory for international students, the cost of that is going to be around $2,100. And finally, the cost of books, supplies, papers, pens, things like that is going to be about $1,000. But that's going to vary based on you know, the classes you might be taking and what supplies you might need. So that brings us to a grand total of $17,600 for one academic year. And some of you may be thinking that's an extreme number. You know, I don't have that kind of money. I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. Um, 
but we do offer payment plans here. You don't have to pay it all up front. You can actually come visit our business office and decide, well, I want to split it up into you know, a monthly payment, and you can pay it that way. So we do offer that option. So the next thing I have is a graph here, and it really shows um, how much tuition is going to cost at Dickinson State. It's going to show how much it costs at another public university here in North Dakota. And then it shows how much tuition and fees and everything is at Washington State University, which is a large state school in the state of Washington. So if you look at health insurance, books and supplies, room and board, things like that, you'll find that the costs are about the same at each one. The clear difference is the price of tuition. So at Dickinson State, you can see it is about the lowest and then it creeps up at the University of North Dakota. And finally, it's almost doubled at Washington State University. So I'm going to let this speak for itself. If you're really concerned about the cost of your education, um, this is definitely something to keep in mind. Next thing I want to go over is working while at Dickinson State. So as an international student, you have the opportunity to work in your first year. Uh, we do require that you work on the university, but it's, it's really easy to find a job. If you're set on working, um, I know that every international student here who wants a job um, has a job. So it's not like it's incredibly difficult to do. And you're able to work up to 20 hours a week, and the jobs pay from anywhere from $11 to $15 an hour, um, which you'll also find is a pretty significant number. If you attend school in another state, you might, might find that you're working you know, at McDonald's or something, and you're making $7.50, you know, $7.50 an hour. So you're able to kind of make a little bit more money and really help pay for that cost um, if you would like. After your first year, you have the option to do curriculum-based training, which is CPT. This is uh, earning college credit while you're working. It's kind of like an internship. This is when international students have the opportunity to get a job off of campus that is related to their major. So if you're a business administration major and you want to work and get college credit, you can find a job uh, at a local business in our community and continue working there. Again, we ask that you work 20 hours a week um, or less during the school year, but students have stayed over in the summertime Students have worked on holiday breaks and they've worked full time, which is 40 hours a week. And again, the price can be $11 an hour, $15 an hour, or even more, depending on the job. Finally, after graduation, you also have the option to um, do optional practical training, which is OPT. So this is when you find a job after you graduate and you continue to stay and work and just get full-time experience in your field um, before you go back. Next thing I want to go over is the housing and food in Dickinson State. So all of our dormitories are between one and two bedrooms. So you're not going to be crammed into a dorm with four or five people. Um, every dorm here has ample space. You know, everyone includes a desk and everything like that. They're all furnished. It comes with free internet. Wi-Fi, free cable TV, and free laundry. Our meal plan is really something special as well because you can go as many times as you want uh, to the dining hall. And it's a buffet style, so you can go up as many times as you want. If you want to go and have 10 pieces of pizza, you can. If you want to go and you have three bowls of pasta, you certainly can. Next thing I want to go over is our ELL program. So we have assistance uh, for people who are coming who want to improve their English before they start taking classes. Um, basically, we have a student uh, teacher who will place you um, into the level that you're at. And if you need to take an English class um, to kind of improve um, you know, your speaking skills, your listening skills before you start attending regular classes, you can. 
We have a language lab with Native American speakers that can help you. And we try and pair our international students with an international student um, in the residential hall so that they can improve their English and just improve their communication skills while they're here. So at Dickinson State, we offer 51 majors. Um, I've listed some of the most popular ones here. Like I said before, Dickinson State started as an educational institution. So we had um, you know, people coming here to learn how to be a teacher. So that still shows through today. We offer programs in physical education, business education, elementary education, things like that. A lot of our international students will study accounting, they'll study finance, computer science, um, or political science. But you can certainly go through that list and find more information on our majors at our website. So next I want to go over the resources at Dickinson State. If you're interested in sports or athletics, um, we have several sports teams. Some of our international students run track. Some of them do um, basketball, wrestling, things like that. We also offer intramural sports. So if you're not as competitive, but you know you want to stay active, being on the team environment, you can certainly do that. Or um, if you're not into sports at all, you're just into watching. We do have very popular sporting events, um, football games, basketball games, things like that in the warmer months and in the winter time as well. We do have an international club for our students where we have events where we, we travel, we go on field trips, um, we have several food events every year and things along those lines. We do have a global table club where students will come and present information about their respective country, about culture there, life there, and um, it's really kind of a good environment because people come from the community, students come um, just to hear that information. And then if you look at those squares there, there's different types of clubs that we have. We have academic clubs, religious clubs, and cultural organizations. Again, if you would like to learn more, you can certainly get this information on our website. So here we've got some photos from our last trip to Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore is located in South Dakota, which is about uh, three, four hours away. So it's a nice day trip if you want to go. It's one of the most beautiful places in the country and you know a real historic landmark. So we go at least once a year, um, if not more. These are some photos um, from our International Food Fair where students prepared a dish from their country and people from the community, people from the school uh, were able to come and sample them. We had about eight or nine different meat dishes, some of them spicy, some of them savory, um, but everything was delicious. Here are some photos from our last homecoming parade uh, where each kind of club or organization in our university will kind of create a float and have a parade through the community. So you can see several flags here um, from South Korea, from Vietnam, from Germany, from Jamaica. Um, and, you know, students are able to, you know, represent where they're from in an event. Next thing I want to go over is the specifics of applying to Dickinson State University. So you may be wondering, what kind of things do I have to do? How much time do I have? Um, do I have to take an English test? Things like that. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do kind of for a smooth application process. So first, we've got our deadlines here. Um, next semester that we're really getting into is fall 2015. So you can start applying on January 15 through our website. And we ask that you apply as soon as possible, you know, if you're interested and it's best not to um, wait till the last minute because you may need to look up some documents, you may need to get some things done, and the more time you have is certainly the better. And if you're not interested in coming in fall, you can certainly also come in spring semester and applications begin for that date on August 1st. 
So here are the kind of core requirements for all of our international students. Uh, we require English language competency. We want to make sure that your English level is high enough so when you come to classes, uh, you can understand what's going on, be able to complete your homework and assignments uh, without any problem. If it's a little lower, we do provide assistance for that as well. We need you to provide transcript evaluation uh, for people who have attended secondary school outside of the United States. So if you have a certificate from your school in France, um, if you've got transcripts in France, we just need you to get those checked. We require some immunizations, um, proof of financial ability. We want to make sure that you're going to be able to pay for your college and just a copy of the passport from your country and pay the application fee and just fill out an application online. So for English language competency, uh, we recommend you take either the TOEFL or the IELTS test. If you take the TOEFL, we ask that you get a score of 71 or above. If you take the IELTS, we ask that you get a score of 6. Um, if you're from a certain country where English is widely spoken, if you were born speaking English, um, we do waive that. So if you're from certain Caribbean countries, obviously Australia, United Kingdom, um, if you're from Ghana, if you're from Nigeria, we do not require that you take this English test. So high school or secondary school transcripts or certificates, we ask that you provide these. We ask that you send in copies of these um, to two different agencies. One is called ACRO, one is called WES, and these companies kind of review your grades, your marks, your classes, and they translate them, they go through them, and kind of figure out the American equivalent. So if I took um, history in France and I received a score of 79, what does that mean in English? They just kind of uh, provide the equivalent and then we're able to judge, you know, do you meet these requirements to attend? If you're from Nigeria or if you're from Ghana, all of those students, um, most of them take the WIAC or the NICO exam. We ask that you provide those scores, provide the scratch cards so we can look up them online. Then we've got our immunization. So we require that all international students, um, as well as domestic students, have an MMR immunization, which is measles, mumps, and rubella. We ask that you have two shots, um, more than 30 days apart. Maybe you had this done when you were a child, and you just need to find that document. Uh, we do ask that you provide that. Next, we've got our application and our application fee. If you visit www.dickinsonstate.edu, if you go to prospective students, um, international students, then you can find our application. The fee is going to cost uh, $35, and you can pay that online or with a wire transfer. So again, my name is Jason Willer. I work in the International Programs Department. Um, if you want to email me with questions, uh, you can go to dsu.internationalprograms at dickinsonstate.edu. I encourage you to check out our College Week Live page uh, for more information, and I encourage you to go visit our website as well. Uh, we're going to move into the next phase of our interview. Uh, where we're going to speak with some students we have here, um, hear about their experiences, and if you would like to ask them questions, you certainly can as well. All right, let's go. So, next. So I've got two of our students with me today. Um, girls, could you first just introduce yourself, tell us your names, tell us where you're from, and what you study. 
My name is Sun Wu and I'm from South Korea. And in here I'm majoring in business administration. My name is Mary Aparante. I'm from Nigeria, West Africa, and um, I'm a senior in the Kingston State University. Uh, my major is our uh, business and human resources management. Great. Um, Mary, I have a question for you. When did you start coming to Dickinson State? Well, I uh, got into Dickinson State University uh, at um, the year 2011, January. That's uh, for the spring 2011. Yeah, that was when I came in here. Okay. I have a question. Do you go home every summer or do you work here? Well, I I would love to go home every summer, but I prefer to stay and just complete my, you know, my school and just work here. So I do work here every summer, every summer I work. So sometimes I go on vacation and I come back and still get my job and continue working. Okay. Was it easy to get a job here? I'll tell you, it's pretty, pretty much easy to get a job in Dickinson, North Dakota. Uh, it's, um, I think we're just very um, favor to be here and have the opportunity to be able to work and go to school and stay, you know, still make time to go out and all that. So it's pretty easy to get a job here. Very easy to get a job. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Sun Wu, I have a question for you. Uh, what are your classes like? How many people are in them usually? Uh, there are not many students. Uh, the average is like 10, or if there's a lot of students, then it'll be 12 to 15. And the class atmosphere is really, really freedom. And I can communicate with my students and professor a lot. And it's really interesting because in Korea, the relationship between professor and students is really strict. And the classroom atmosphere is really, really quiet. But in here, I can say what I want to, what I want to say. So we can communicate each other really easily. And I really like it. All right, thank you. What is your favorite class or favorite professor? Uh, my favorite professor in here was Wolf. And it was business administration. And he was really interested in international students and I worked for him for this semester and he was really nice and funny and he carried me a lot so I really liked him. Great, thank you. Mary, I have a question for you. Um, what resources or what do you do to connect to American students here? Well, it's not hard. It's just, um, I mean, people here are very friendly and like very welcoming. Because uh, I can remember the first day I stepped into the into the airport and uh, all what I it was it was different experience back on where where I came from. I came from the one of the largest city in Nigeria, which is Lagos, and everybody just mind their business. You know, nobody look at you, nobody smile at you. But when I came here, I was very welcomed, and people just look at you and they smile at you. And when they see you standing, they ask you if you need help with anything and all that. It's very easy to communicate with people, even no matter how shy you are people will approach you and say hi to you you'll be forced to like get involved and communicate with people i i really like that about taking to north Korea. that's good okay thank you you're welcome sun Wu, do you live in a residential hall oh yeah okay could you tell us about life and experience uh, there okay uh last semester i lived in woods and this semester i live in the long and i think each dorm has their own advantage at first uh, Woods is only for women's dorm, and the facilities in there more better than belong. Like it has a sink in the room, and then the kitchen is more wider, and it's only girls, so it's really comfortable to girls. But in belong, I think it is mixed, so we can hang out a lot. And whenever I just just sat down in the in the lounge, I met a lot of students, and we hang out a lot, and we make a lot of memories. Uh, like, like uh, share our cultures or friends. And then, I think Delong is more free, free more, has more freedom than was like turning on the music more louder. And yeah, and the the two dorms are really good. 
Okay, you mentioned there's a kitchen in your dorm. Do you cook a lot? I mean, oh yeah, and then whenever I cook some Korean foods, I invited other students and then we eat together. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Mary, I have a question. What advice for new international students do you have? Well, my advice for people out there, um, wherever country you are, is just that um, make your research very well. And um, if you want to know more about Dickinson State University, you'll say when, at the first time when I came here, I was like, oh, Oh, the weather. People tell me about the weather, how cold it is and how that. I'm still here for four years. I mean, it's getting better. We have a lot of uh, people coming in from bigger city right now because of the job opportunity and how that people are coming in. So we have more diversified people coming in and which is, which make it more interesting. So my advice for people out there is that Dickinson State University is it's good. It's one of the best school. We are still here. I'm getting my degree this December and I'm so excited and we have all the people here that can testify to that. So um, go into the website and read more about it. If you want more information, then you see what we're talking about. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you. All right. My last question is for Sun Wu. Um, it's the same question. What advice do you have for international students or for students who are coming from Korea? I think a first year is really cold. So bring a lot of uh, warm jackets or clothes. And I, I want to advise this, uh, as you can uh, experience a lot of things like traveling or hang out with friends or cooking and sharing our cultures and, and introduce them to other students. And I, uh, for me, I traveled a lot and it is really good memories that I hang out a lot in dorm with other friends and I, uh, if I go back to Korea, I will really, really miss them. So I think, yeah, that is what I want to talk to other students. Great insight. All right, girls, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Jason. And have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right, we have two more students we're going to talk to and get a little bit more information. So again, could you tell us where you're from, um, what you study, and um, just how your experience has been so far? Hi, my name is Gemma, and I'm from Mongolia, and I'm a current junior at DSU. And What do you study? Um, I, I am double majoring in accounting and business. OK. Okay. Um, my name is Delana Lilly. I am from Jamaica. I'm currently a junior at Dickinson State, and I'm studying business administration with a minor in management information systems. Okay, so you're both juniors and you both study business. Yep. Wow. Um, can Can you tell us um, what makes Dickinson State unique, Gemma? Um, Dickinson State classes are small, which gives us, as Sonu said before, um, gives us opportunity to, to talk with the professors more. And our professors have open door policy, so we can come in and ask any questions we have if we have questions. And they're more friendlier than bigger universities, and the community is a little bit smaller. So you can make friends really easily. And people here are so friendly. So I think that's one of the biggest advantages of our university. Thank you. Delana, um, what do you do to connect to American students here at the university? And is it difficult? Uh, not difficult at all. Especially for me being an athlete here, um, naturally I get to communicate and interact with all my teammates. Um, there are a lot of things here to get involved in. Um, so just um, for me, it's just simply a matter of like just going out there and meeting people each and every day. Um, I have a job here in campus, which enables me to interact with a whole lot of people, being a peer mentor and tutor here on campus. So I get to interact and reach out to a lot of people here on campus. Cool. So you play sports. Uh, what sport do you play? And was it easy to get into this program? Oh, yes, it was. Um, actually, they seeked me out, which was really amazing. I'm still quite impressed about it. Being from Jamaica, like getting a call one day, hey, Dickinson State University, we've been keeping track of your progress. How would you like to come here to, um, for school? So that is basically how it happened. Oh, and I'm a member of the track and field team here. Great. Thank you. Gemma, uh, I want to ask, do you work at the university? And tell us about your job. Oh, I do work at university. I work at enrollment service. 
So I basically help to enroll in coaches to recruit students and make some documents with the office job. Okay. So it helps a lot to improve my English, actually. I do write emails daily, and I do arrange stuff, so it helps me a lot to get a work experience. Was it easy for you to get a job, and was, what is the pay like? It was pretty easy for me to get a job, and my pay is pretty high compared to other on-campus jobs from different universities. So Great. Delano, um, do you live in a residential hall, or have you? And tell us about your experience there. Yeah, um, I no longer live in a residential hall. I live actually in the apartments that are run by the Alumni Association. Um, over, I did used to live in a resident hall, and it was I liked it personally, but it's just that um, I found something that was somewhat better. Not saying that the residentials are all aren't great. There is I lived in the long hall, um, and Silky actually, and um. I liked it there. You got to interact with a lot of people. There are pool tables in the dorms, ping pong tables. As I mentioned before, there's a kitchen. So there are quite a bit of things to do. Dorms are good. Thank you. Gemma, do you get a scholarship from Dickinson State? And tell us how it helped you if you did. I did receive partial scholarship from business department because uh, I'm currently a business major student. And it helped me a lot to pay my tuition costs because as a international student, for us, we can only work 20 hours, and receiving a scholarship gives us a big opportunity to help pay our tuition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, last question for both of you. Um, what advice do you have for new international students that may be coming? <laughs> sure. Um, I don't know. First of all, the world is a very, very big place. It's really good to go out there and explore, learn about new things, learn about new cultures. And many places offer that, and Dickinson State is just one of many. Um, I recommend coming here because, as mentioned before, this place is a really, really, there's a lot of great colleges, and it's good to just come here and see what it's about and learn more, and it will help benefit to you for the future as you go on and learn things from here. In addition to that, before coming to U.S., I'd like to tell students to know more about information about visa and what you can expect for from America and be open to any kind of experience here. And people will be really friendly to you at DSU, so they will help you with anything and you can make friends just like, just like that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Delano. Um, you provided some great insight and some great answers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us. All right, so I'm going to conclude our webcast today. Um, again, if you would like more information, please contact me. My name is Jason Willer, and my colleague, Persin Polishwala, uh, will be extremely happy to assist you if you need any um, assistance uh, with visa requirements or anything like that. Um, I encourage you to contact us or to visit our website. Um, DickinsonState.edu, and we look forward to hearing from you, and thank you for tuning in today. Have a great afternoon or evening.